To see is to touch. Nothing is really seen, only represented. We experience reality through our senses. Through them we are gathering information and interacting with our surroundings. Those senses have been calibrated by millions of years of evolution to satisfy our needs for water, food, reproduction, avoiding danger. We are fine-tuned to see what we need and disregard what is not relevant for our immediate survival or experience. Our eyes see just a fraction of electromagnetic spectrum, primarily visible light, and even there just a limited frequency range. We don't see infrared or ultraviolet. Our senses can't register radio waves, microwaves, X-rays or gamma rays. And the fact is, this is not even the most limiting factor. We don't see things with our senses, but with our mind. For us to see is to have a comprehension of something. To understand what we are seeing. The act of understanding is the act of seeing. And to understand it is to recognize it. To recognize something means it has been already experienced before. It means that we are seeing new things all as old ones, as something that we have already seen. The quantum realm shows us what really is the act of seeing. As an act of touch, in a sense, it is an aggressive act, an act of bombarding a certain object with photons or other waves. To see something, we need to bounce billions of particles or waves from the object's surface so we can receive them with our senses and devices. In a way, if we don't touch it, if we don't interact with it, it doesn't register for us. It is not there, it doesn't exist. In quantum physics, this is called wave function collapse. When a particle from an undefined state, superposition, collapses into a defined measured state. Before the collapse, the particle position wasn't defined. In a sense, we defined its position by measuring. Physics calls this interaction observation. To hear, to see, to sense, to touch are ultimately all the same. To see the unseen and unseeable, we need to make some sort of representation. The unseeable is a hypothesis, a theory, a construct that hasn't been proven yet. When we prove it, when it becomes part of our habitual experience, we can finally see it. But to do so, we need to adopt it to our experiential realm, to existing old ideas, in order con to construct the new from the old. Can we see things that are at the verge of our senses or of our mind? What is the limit of representation? Is it the fact that we need to represent the new as the old in order to understand it? Something outside immediate experience is automatically unseeable or unseen. We can only see it through the image of already seen. We need to symbolically represent it, show one thing as something else, closest to the one we want to show, something close to our existing experience. The further it is from the accustomed, from our scale, the less understandable it is, the harder it is to see it. To represent it is to try to see it, and the representation is the impossibility of seeing it as it really is. Is this where art comes in? To touch the untouchable, to sense the insensible? Many disciplines are operating in this domain. Art, science, philosophy, religion. Trying to understand our position in reality outside the immediate environment. What differentiates art then? Should it go further? I believe we should try to understand the construct of cultural narratives, shield ourselves from the existing ones, from the reflections of the system that we are immersed in. Only then we might be able to see outside of our reality and get a glimpse of what is beyond. Otherwise we will never be free from the game we call life. There are too many reflections and feedback loops in it. The sentence, this is armadillo, can be used either to accurately represent anything that is armadillo, or to misrepresent anything that is not an armadillo. If the only thing that you know are armadillos, then everything else that is not armadillo you interpret as a subsection of armadillo. 
This sentence is related to a mysterious book called Voynich Manuscript, which is dated to 15th century. The text was never deciphered, but the drawings represented in it show animals looking like armadillos, which were not known at the time. They were not discovered much until much later as part of New World. The limit of representation is an evolving exhibition project that at the moment has three stages, but by no means these are final three. There's already some development in further expansion of it. The Observer um, is a project that's searching for partners, possible institutions to collaborate with. I expect in near future to have more developments in that area. The collapse has been initiated in 2019 um, in collaboration with Dr. Nemes Shantic and Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics in Garching. And now is in final stages of development in Institute of Physics in Zagreb and I expect it to be presented in the exhibition um, in Vienna in May. The limit representation drawings and paintings are an ongoing project that emerged in a way from the collapse and the research that accompanying it. I noticed this direct connection between the scientific visualizations that I, I, I was researching and the drawings that I spontaneously started to develop in this exact period and realized that the fundamental problem of art and science in general is the analogies that we are always using and the limit of the visual. How to transfer ideas that are more complex than the elements that we can use. Surface, line, color. These drawings and paintings is something that I'm now working on quite intensively during my stay in Bildram Studio Residence in Vienna from December 2020 till May 2021. The Observer, immersive space of emptiness. I think already in this sentence there's this duality, this contrast, paradox, a space that's immersive, implying that's full of something that is accepting, is at the same time empty. And many of the things that we, because of our limiting, limited senses, perceive as empty, like the air and the space that we habituate in, are actually full of gases, forces, waves. The gaze of the conscious observer generates wave-like patterns appearing and disappearing as projections on the wall of the space, impl implying that our reality is undetermined until it's observed. The observer is defining the reality. Depending on the point of the gaze, patterns start to appear. The patterns are generated when the laser light is transmitted through an optical cavity. These patterns are Laguerre Gaussian laser modes. Patterns would emerge subtly and gradually through the edge of visible to fully visible. I stumbled upon these patterns by, you could say, accident, or it was maybe a spontaneous search for something that would truly represent this idea of visible, invisible, and reality that's emerging. And instantaneously, when I found these visualizations, it looked like something that is 
what it should be, what I should use. And then we, in, during my conversation with Dr. Nevin Shantich, uh, I realized that this is quite directly connected to their research in quantum optics. So it's interesting, this spontaneous um, discovery and how it relates to the actual topic that I'm trying to deal with. I think the quote from Werner Heisenberg, German theoretical physicist and one of the key pioneers of quantum mechanics, truly represents the foundation of this installation. The idea of an objective real world whose smallest parts exist objectively in the same sense as stones or trees exist independently whatever or not we observe them is impossible. So the collapse is based on a double slit experiment and it demonstrates the wave function collapse. If an electron passes through the two slits undisturbed, it will behave as a wave and form interference pattern. If we measure through which of the two slits it passes, it behaves as a particle, implying that our reality is undetermined until it's observed. The results of this experiment depend on the observer. The project is aimed at scaling up the double slit experiment and building a large scale projection. Normally, the size of the double slit experiment is a few centimeters, and in this installation, it's going to be several meters long. It is meant to connect the quantum scale to human scale, making it more visible and highlighting the weirdness of the quantum realm. Here you can see the setup of the inside of the installation. Three powerful diodes, RGB lights, that are focused into the optical cable, into one spot, creating white light, and projected through the main lens onto the wall. This is basically a scaled up version of scientific instrument but much more powerful. And this is the simulation, how it, in the end it should look like. You will be able to immerse yourself into the light, into the physicality of it, see the diffraction from white to green to blue to red. The limit of representation, series of drawings and paintings are created during an exchange with Dr. Nevin Shantich, who is postdoctoral researcher at Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics. And what is currently done at the Institute in Quantum Many Body Systems Division are quantum simulations. Quantum simulations measure the interaction of atoms at the quantum level something that neither classical nor quantum computers are currently capable of fully recreating. By analogy, in 50s and 60s, aerodynamic measurements were done in air tunnels, when digital computers were not powerful enough to do that. Today, these experiments can be simulated on a digital computer without the use of tunnels. It will also be possible to simulate quantum measurements on quantum computers once they reach that level of computation. These drawings can be understood as an effort on quantum simulation at the level of painting. The motivation for this research is to explore the connection between physical laws and the process approach to painting, and the limitations of the digital computer as medium for representing the quantum level. Drawings are a result of direct interaction of mediator, artist, tools and surfaces. I try to purify the mo movement of all form of deliberations. When drawing, painting is reduced to repetitive function, elementary unit of motion, surrendered to errors and physical properties of color and surface, 
The results of these artistic experiments irresistibly resemble particle motion, generative growth structures, Lorentz equation, Brownian motion, subatomic particles, electron trajectories. Drawings are not reproduction, but the result of interaction, spontaneous structure, created by a series of deliberate and spontaneous actions, coincidences, discoveries, and emergencies. These results insinuate that the artist can participate in the discovery cognition by speculative methods. I see art as an ever-evolving discipline that is not confined by arbitrary boundaries and is free to wander between different fields. It is a place where I find a safe haven for explorations. I strongly believe that art can participate in the discovery of cognition by speculative methods and that artists should work side by side with scientists and philosophers in this process. Physics has not only substantially advanced in the 20th century, but in the process it has also shaped the way how we view the world. It is only logical to join them in their endeavor and keep the position of arts relevant by giving our contribution as artists in understanding the nature of our reality.